Is your fashion sense being held hostage by religious beliefs? It's time to break free, my friend, from bondage and embrace your personal style. Join me in this video where I will show you how to test religious training against the scriptures and discover the truth about your spirit of beauty. Do not let these beliefs hold you back from expressing yourself through fashion, which is a gift. Learn how to be fabulous, fashionable, and faithful with my expert tips and step into the fullness of your spirit of beauty. So right out of the gate, it's important for us to understand the difference between religion and faith. And here's my take on it. In my experience of over half a century on this planet, my understanding, my opinion of religion is that it has nothing to do with faith. It's got nothing to do with God. It's got nothing to do with the Bible. Religion is the man-made list of all the boxes that we have to tick of what we must do, what we must wear, where we must go, how we must behave, what we must say, what we mustn't say, what we must do on Sundays. It's got everything to do with control and it's rooted in fear. Faith, on the other hand, is about relationship and about trust for me. It's about my relationship with my Heavenly Father, with my Creator. It's about my self-esteem, which is my self-worth, my identity, understanding who He says I am. And it's about trust, trusting Him and trusting myself. And it has been my experience when these two get mixed up, when faith gets blindsided by religion, well, then our relationship with our Heavenly Father becomes severed and, and technical and less personal and less as it should be. And that's why I'm always saying we must stop outsourcing our faith to the guy reading the Bible on a Sunday. No offense toward him, he's probably a good guy, but you are relying on him to read, understand, and translate to you to apply that which you should be reading. We shouldn't be outsourcing our faith. We should be educating ourselves. You shouldn't be outsourcing your personal style. You should be outs you, you should be learning the skill because style is just a skill. So stick with me. I'm going to share some things with you. But when it comes to your faith, it's between you and your creator. It's got nothing to do with anybody else. However, having said that, your faith is a representation of the life that is in you. Your faith and your trust and your belief in him has inside of you a light that is called to arise and shine. So yes, it's a very private, personal thing. I've heard a lot of women say, but it's my business. It's like, yes, it is your business. However, you are designed to connect. You are designed for community and connection and conversation and congregation. You're designed for love, to love him, be loved by him and love his people. That's what faith is all about, is trusting that which he said you are and who he made you to be and getting up, dressing up, and being the bold lad on a hill that you are called to be in this world. Here's my take on it. There are some really, really good men and women out there who are doing their best to share with the world the word and the truth and that which we, if we are Christians, you may have a different faith and thank you that we can learn from each other. I surround myself with people who are not the same as me, not in faith or color or culture or anything because that's the only way that we can grow and learn, right? But there are good men and women out there who are doing good things. At the same time, those men and women are sometimes kept in their own mindset of what is right and wrong. They are rigid in what they believe is good and bad, and they are not. They are coaching and training and leading people, but I don't really see them much coaching and leading and training with other people who are more superior than them in their field, in their industry, in their specialty, which is the word. I see them teaching and leading and preaching and, but, but listen, so the point being this, I am not anti-church and I am not against people who preach from the Bible, but what I am is someone who is always learning and questioning and asking and wanting to grow and to get better and stronger and understand what my God says about about, about the color red, about beauty, about my body, about my purpose, about my, my calling. That's really important, right? Yet I have sat in a church years ago, beautiful church, full of beautiful people, and I've heard the pastor say, I don't know what the topic was, I don't know how it came up, but I heard him say, your body is just a shell. What matters is what's on the inside. It doesn't matter what you wear. It doesn't matter what you look like. Beauty is, an, is, is on the inside. And I'm like, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right from what I have read. Doesn't sound right from the conversations I've had with my God. It, it just doesn't sound right. And it was, it is just what it is. When I asked questions around this, I was shut down because this particular man, um, and yes, I've had to do a lot of uh, forgiving. I'm sure he has as well. 
And I, I had a lot of questions and uh, he, for some reason, he wasn't happy with it and he didn't like my questions and he felt like I had too much to say and too much to ask and too much. To, I was just so hungry to understand what does God say about my body, about my beauty, about red, about color, about fashion, about style, about modesty. And what does he have to say about that? And I was shut down all the time, all the time. It didn't help that in the same church for many years, I uh, and, and my God gave me a passion for fashion from a young age. I would get up, dress up as I always do, go to church on a Sunday and be met with pretty much the same woman, most of them elders' wives. And uh, I would walk in and uh, inevitably they would say, uh-oh, here comes Linda, making a nice look bad again. Or it was, Linda, this is uh, uh, this is church. It's not a fashion show, you know. So um, he was a little bit overdressed. Or I would walk in and one particular woman said, um, Linda, you clearly have too much time on your hands because nobody looks that good this time of the morning. And I would face these comments all the time on Sunday mornings to the point that about a year and a half, maybe two years later, a friend of mine came to me, a beautiful woman by the name of Nicola, and she said to me, hey, what's going on? I'm like, so what do you mean? So she said, come for my, to my house for coffee and uh, let's have a chat. And she sat me down and she said, you're not dressing the same. You're not speaking the same. I don't hear you anymore. You're in the back. You're like not involved. And and I got tearful and I said to her, Nick, I am just so sick and tired of facing the, this avalanche of, of, of mockery and of sarcasm every time I walk into the church. And, and I love these women. I know them. Some of them are my friends and most of them are, are elders' wives and they're the leadership of this church. I love dressing up because I love dressing up because God gave me this passion. And uh, anyway, she gave me a real good wrapping of the knuckles. So she said, you ask God to give you help with how to respond to those comments and those quips when you walk in and you get back to who you are. You get back to dressing up. You get back to loving fashion. You get back to your heels and worshiping and talking and praising and asking questions the way that you normally do. And so I did. And I asked him for a one-liner and here's what he gave me. The next Sunday when I walked in, true's nuts, there was the peanut gallery sitting on a couch having a coffee. And I walked in and I got another comment, something like, oh, oh, making us look bad or, oh, Linda, there's not a fashion show. I walked up to them and with a smile on my face, I said to them, you know what, guys, I don't dress up to dress anybody else down. I dress up because God gave me a passion for fashion. And if ever you want to go shopping or talk fashion or personal style, hey, you know where to find me. And I walked off and I went and did my thing on that Sunday morning. Well, I got three messages that same day. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. I've been gossiping about you. I just don't know how to do it. And you made me feel bad. I'm like, actually, no. The truth is I had nothing to do with you looking the way that you do and feeling the way that you do. That is the truth. But then I got a message also from a, a, a friend who, who I loved. And she actually came for coffee with tears in her eyes. And she said, please forgive me. I have been gossiping about you for a long time, agreeing with you and laughing about you when the other women were also mocking you for how you dressed and it all has come out of jealousy it all has come out of any because i don't know how to do it and i said to her why don't you just ask me why don't you just say hey can you show me some stuff hey can you come shopping with me so church can be a powerful training ground for getting rid of the fear of man because i actually left that church after a while i just uh, i was i was so hurt and i felt uh that i wasn't in a safe place and uh, the the pastor made it very very clear that he wasn't going to answer my questions and just thought that I was a loud mouth. And I was. I was outspoken. I was so desperate to be heard. I had questions I didn't understand so much, but I was desperate to learn. I was desperate to grow in my, my relationship with him. And, uh, and then God said to me, go back to the church. And he sent me back and I went back and it was so good. That was training ground for me to learn that people are just people. And probably most of them, not all, but most of them are doing the best that they can. And everybody makes mistakes and everybody, hurt people hurt people. We've all been hurt and we've all hurt women, right? Especially women. And so I went back with a renewed sense of vision, a renewed mindset. And it was an incredible next few years of training, of looking, of understanding, of having a different perspective and knowing that God expected and needed me to read the scriptures and not just listen to what this guy had to say on a Sunday morning. And that's where things changed is I started reading about fashion and about color and about texture and about style from the scriptures and it's mind-blowing there is powerful beautiful incredible evidence that he doesn't just care about what we wear he is in fact very specific about the call to action on how we should present ourselves as women in the world so as i dive deep into the scriptures well you know all of these probably and more you know what does it say about 
me and my body and my beauty. It says I'm a set apart nation. It says I'm a royal priesthood. It says I'm a king in the marketplace. It says in Psalms, I am majestic and splendid. It says I'm the apple of his eye. It says I am beautiful. It says do all things as unto him, right? Not except the way you dress. Do all things. Never be lacking in zeal. Never be, never be lacking in passion. And doesn't it say the righteous are as bold as a lion? Mm-hmm. So if you find yourself in an environment where you are restricted and uh, perhaps criticized for the way that you dress, or you're not encouraged to step into the spirit of your beauty, a first practical step I want to give you is check your environment. Are you in the right church? I don't go to church, yet I'm a very spiritual person. I, I take very seriously my relationship with my father. I believe in his son, Yeshua, and I am very much in tune with people and certain things and, and, and habits and routines around me that keep my focus and my attention on, am I on the right path? And who am I doing fellowship with? And you don't have to go to church. Some of the things I always hear women say or people say when someone says, um, are you a Christian? Yes, but I don't go to church. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian. In fact, sometimes that is the opposite of what can be helpful. If you if you have a faith, whatever your faith is, if you're a Christian or if you're Jewish, if it, that's your faith. And I do believe that it is for us to, it is a private and personal relationship, but the light should be representative of that which we believe. Our light and our shine should be drawing others in. Not through just telling them what to do, but actually by living out that which we believe. You know, let your fruit be the result. Let your, let your fruit be the evidence of who you are and what you believe. So first, just check. Are you in the right church or are you in the right environment? Because sometimes you won't be. Sometimes you are. Sometimes it's really hard and doesn't feel like you're connecting with anybody. But God will tell you, are you in the right place? I left the church that I thought that I loved and he sent me back. And he was right. And if you don't have that environment, you want to seek out like-minded men and women who are on a similar journey, who have similar beliefs, who are in fellowship for the same reasons. And if none of that is available to you, I mean, technology today just taps us into myriad of like endless options with regards to who we want to be in touch with and who we want to learn from and how we want to grow. Technology is an incredible gift. It's a huge bridge to the world out there. So if you don't have an environment or a church, find one or two people. Who do you have in your life? who would be considered as trustworthy elders, you know, a, a man or a woman or someone who is who you regard um, as trustworthy, as learned, as consistent, as approachable. And if you are a woman and he is a man, someone that you can trust. Or if you are a woman and she's a woman, someone who's not going to be jealous of your beauty because you need to talk about your beauty. You need to talk about your body. You need to talk about sex. You need to talk about all of these things. If you need that kind of guidance, you need to find the person that can guide you. They are out there. If that proves difficult for you, you have something else that you can do that's practical and easy to apply. Take your inspiration from creation. I've been doing this for years and years and years. When I haven't understood the colorway, I mean, this is not exactly, what is this? Is it is it a splash of winter or summer? Uh, not winter, like uh, spring or a bit of, um, if you look further down, it gets darker, like it's a little bit of full with, I am not okay with being restricted to just being in autumn. That means I can only wear 25% of the rainbow. That's not okay with me. So I have my own one to three color me style system that works for me and works for my clients. But if you are unsure about does brown go, can I wear these brown shoes with this green dress? I don't know. Have you looked at the trees outside, the brown bark and the green leaves? If God thought it was okay to put the, those two colors together, then for me, it's just fine. Does um, orange go with brown? Can I wear can I wear this orange dress with brown these brown heels? Have you ever looked at an owl? Beautiful brown, rich brown owl with like orange, orange, orange eyes. The most beautiful thing. Yes, it does. Can I wear this pink dress with uh, green flat shoes? Well, have you ever seen a meadow of green full of pink, beautiful, vibrant flowers? Yes, you can. At the end of the day, friend, when it comes to your body, your beauty, your sexuality, your femininity. Is a Christian allowed to be sexy? Oh my gosh, of course we are. Don't be afraid to show a little bit of skin. I am happily married. I've got kids. I'm a businesswoman. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I'm a, and I am very solid and secure in who I am. That takes work, of course. I've invested thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and years and tears and time and effort into my grief recovery. And so that is a really important part of your spirit of beauty is whatever's happened to you in the past. You've got to deal with it. You've got to heal from your past and deal and move forward. You cannot rely on 
feeling good on a Sunday morning, a rah, 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 and then the week being difficult. If you've been physically, sexually, emotionally abused, I've been all those things, you need to get grief recovery. You need to overcome those things. You need to know that it's always going to be a part of you, but it will not ever dictate who you are in the future. That's not who you are. Those are just things that happen to you. If you need support, if you need encouragement, if you need to start slow in a safe and quiet place, join my Facebook group, Dress to Connect, or join on my free webinars. Click on the link below, lindapage.com. I talk about these things because these things need talking about. But I can tell you this, it starts with the woman in the mirror. Your beauty, your body, whether or not you're being uh, modest or, or, or modern, or whether you're being too sexy or not, as a Christian woman, you are allowed to be sexy damaged. Oh my gosh, of course you are. As a Christian woman, you are to love the woman in the mirror. Therein lies the challenge. Therein lies the opportunity. Is the day that you choose, and today is Tuesday. You get to choose every day. Am I going to come against her and body bash her and criticize her and complain about her butt and her boobs and her belly and her upper arms? Or am I going to draw a line in the sand today? I'm going to come against that which is coming against me and which has come against me the last 30, 40, 50 years, am I going to say no more like I did years ago? It's exactly what I did. I got to my early 40s about a decade ago. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done being my own biggest critic. I am done covering up on the beach. I am done even when I'm teeny tiny and at my best weight and my best goal weight. I'm done not, not liking what I see in the mirror. I'm done with that BS. And I'm done with the BS that I get, that I've been taught for years and years out there in the marketplace and in churches, which is that Christian women, it doesn't matter how they dress because beauty is only on the inside. And then that, listen, you want to, you want to talk about scriptures and relate scripture can get on one of my webinars. I actually have a whole section dedicated to what the, what the Bible says at which time about what and how come and in what color. And actually what 1 Peter 3 verse 3 is actually all about. One of the most misread, misinterpreted uh, and misused, abused scriptures in the Bible when it comes to a woman's spirit of beauty. Forgiveness lies at the heart of your spirit of beauty and your spirit of beauty starts with your heart. And it begins with you making a commitment to the woman in the mirror, apologizing to her, asking her forgiveness for all of the self-hate and the self-rejection and the self-criticism that you have bestowed upon her all of these years. It's not too late. You can start off fresh like I did. And I got on my knees and I'm like, show me a way. I want to fall in love with the woman in the mirror. And he showed me. And I'm so happy to share that with you if you want to go on that journey with me. There is another concept you really need to understand. And that is self-confidence versus self-esteem. They are completely different things. One is trust in God. One is trust in yourself. And one is a gift that is given. And another one is that which you build upon the gift that is given. That alone is an absolute total game changer when it comes to your personal style. Because here's the truth about you, my friend. You are a woman of substance, a woman of strength, a woman of style and success. But you need to learn how to dress on the outside that reflects the woman on the inside. And here's the good news. Style is just a skill. You can learn how to build a beautiful wardrobe on a budget that is customized to your body, your body shape, your lifestyle, your personality, your profession. Style is just a skill. But it starts with you making commitment to the woman in the mirror saying, I am going to upskill. I am going to increase my value. I'm going to invest in myself because it's not just wise. It is biblical to invest in yourself and prioritize yourself. Doesn't it say love your neighbor as yourself? Mm -hmm. As women, we take such good care of everybody else. We, we take care of our marriages, of our children, our, our families, our community, our church, our business, our Friends, we take such good care of others that we lose ourselves somewhere along the way. Then we get frumpy and grumpy and we can't understand what happened. What happened was we outsourced our faith when it comes to what our Creator actually says about our spirit of beauty. So I invite you to join me on this incredible path of understanding who you are, what you stand on, and actually what is behind your spirit of beauty, the power and the purpose behind it, because it has power and it has purpose. Next time you go to the grocery store, do me a favor and try something. If you're going in your, in your t-shirt and your jeans and, uh, and your hair's in a ponytail, do me a favor and just put on some beautiful, bold red lipstick or hot pink or whatever blows your hair back. Put on a, a big pair of hoop earrings. Just make an effort just going to the grocery store, just running your errands, just going on the school run and test and track what the response is to you. Test and track, by the way, if you've got kids, how they respond to you. The presidential position that is mom is one that requires a uniform and it does have a uniform. I've been 
homeschooling mom with babies on hip and toddler and cooking and and homeschooling and running errands and there is a very simple stylish wardrobe that you can build for yourself that is kind of an interim with babies on the hips and toddlers at your knees kind of style there's a shelf or two or three for that style is just a skill i have got client after beautiful client who have come out of harsh religious backgrounds who have stepped into the light and made a decision to disconnect from the chains and the bonds and the bounds that was religious training around women are just there to procreate and uh, dressing up as vain and looking good as selfish and red as evil. Well, let me tell you something. That's my favorite freaking topic on the planet. And I will take any pastor, any preacher on with Bible in hand saying, show me where it says it. I'm going to end with one thing that is going to help you. I will make it two things. Number one, red is a powerful, beautiful, biblical color. I did a survey years ago and I asked the men, question men, all of them, what is the color you love to see women wearing? Guess what they said? Red. And then I asked the women, an even larger number of women, what is the color that you love to wear that makes you feel beautiful and bold and sexy? Guess what they said? Red. Guess what's not in your wardrobe? Those beautiful clients of mine who realized the power and the beauty behind red once they stepped into the light, once they removed the shackles of that religious bound up training, they started wearing red, they started having fun with fashion and guess what? Some of them got married, some of them got promoted, some of them are earning triple what they used to earn. Some of them are now in new relationships and they've been single for 12 years. Some of them are engaged to be married. These things are not coincidence. I have a saying, red, enough said. As a next step then, join Dress to Connect on Facebook and join a large number of women who are like-minded on a similar journey to getting up, dressing up and being that bold light on the hill that we know we are called to be. Or go to the link below, lindapage.com and join my next free webinar where I dive deep into what the scriptures say about fashion and our body and our spirit of beauty. Because I'm here to tell you this. You don't see the mountains apologizing for its powerful, steadfast, stable presence. You don't see the ocean apologizing for its its move me, moving, mesmerizing, powerful, peaceful nature. You don't, you don't see the jaguar apologizing for its its power and its that no. So why should you and I as women apologize for our beauty? Why should we dumb it down? Why should we dim our light? Why? Because you're told, be careful, you don't want to cause a man to stumble. Listen, you are not responsible for a man's stumble. You're not responsible for a man's eyes. He's responsible for that. There was that and hundreds of other scriptures that are that are used to come against women to say, dial it down. Just don't be so beautiful. Don't be too sexy. What the hell? That's BS. That is totally, I'm being very lady like as I say that right now. That is not scriptural. That is not biblical. It doesn't say that. And here's one last thing. Don't say I am enough. Do not, you are not enough. I'm here to tell you, you are not enough. Nowhere in the scriptures does it say you are enough. It says you're a royal priesthood. It says you are a set apart nation. You're kings in the marketplace. It says you're beautiful. It says you're majestic. It says you're splendid. It doesn't say you're enough. That is a worldly response to a worldly attack on your spirit of beauty. This is my favorite topic on the planet. Join me in my next webinar or let's do life together somehow because I'm here to tell you, you're not seeing this by mistake. Today, as you're watching this, you are called to arise and shine and he is looking to raise you up. But it starts with you. You've got to make a decision. It starts with the woman in the mirror. Join me on this journey, friend. It'll change your life. Your spirit of beauty has power. It has purpose. And you have no apology to make for your beauty. In fact, we have no right to apologize and dim down that which he has made. So let's do something life together. Let's get together. Go to lindapage.com. Join me on my next webinar or join us in our community. 